All right, guys and girls, welcome to another episode. Oh, the camera's right there. Wait, wait, there it is. <laughs> of Astral Order Repairs. <laughs> you dig it. All right, check it out. Behind me, I got a 93. What the heck is Bird gonna attack me? I'm gonna shoot. <laughs> All right, what we got behind me is a 93 Ford Bronco. <laughs> and today we're gonna show you how to replace the rear brake shoes. Coming up on Astral Order Repairs. Right, guys the first thing we're gonna do is jack the vehicle up as you can see I got my hydraulic jack jacked up right in the center of the differential and pick up both wheels at the same time then I took my jack stands which is very important definitely have to do some jack stands and I set them up right up under the uh, strut the uh, shock mounts and then I lowered it down just a little bit now I am on a good foundation ground so I'm good to go if you want dirt or grass definitely use a piece of plywood not particle board as a uh, base so the jack won't sink into the ground all right let's go ahead and take these ties off and we'll be right back all right now we're only going to show you one side because both sides is identical so it doesn't make any sense of showing you both sides all right now your ties are held on by five lug nuts they're 13 16 so or you use 21 millimeter i like to use 21 millimeter because it sets a little bit faster so i got 21 millimeter deep uh half inch drive with my cordless and what I'm what I'm doing right now is because a lot of times, a lot of times these lug nuts, I gotta tell the customer to get some new ones. Because there's it's a chrome casing around a steel nut, and these swell up all the time. They swell up. So when you go to take them off, your socket will get stuck in there. So this one didn't get stuck in it, but they will get stuck in it. Alright, let's get these off, get the rest of them off, and get this tie off, and we'll be right back. Got to tie it off. Now, next thing to do is take off the drum. Now, this is coming off pretty easy, but sometimes, a lot of times, these get stuck on there. So, what you want to do is take your nice hammer and you want to hit the sides of it, and it will shock it loose to get it off. Uh, if it don't come off after that, you have to de-adjust the brakes. We'll go into adjusting brakes in a minute, but uh, that gets more a little bit compl complicated, especially when you build a, there's a groove inside the drum. So, take our drum off. Set that down to the side. This thing is filled with brake dust and all that. You definitely don't want to breathe that in. So what you want to do is get you a pan with some brake cleaner or carburetor cleaner. Hold it up right there. You want to spray all around the cut down on that dust from flying and getting inside your system. You know, don't be don't be afraid to use a lot. Use a lot if you have to. But you got you got to be around. To do a lot more brake jobs. <laughs> All right, we got that done. We're gonna leave our thing. Leave it right there. Now, guys, you wanna. I know a lot of you don't have these tools. I'm about to show you because a lot of cars don't have drum brakes. So now, to do this job, you're gonna need this tool right here. I can't. You just just some, get just get a just look up brake tool set. You're gonna see this right here. This is to remove the springs I'm about to show you. You're gonna need an adjusting spoon, and you're gonna need this little tool right here. This takes off the springs. Now, a lot of times I see guys use uh, vice grips and all. You can use that, but that's, it, it's, it's a little bit more difficult in doing that. Now, it's a very important, unless you got, a good thing to do is have your other brake, brake up, your other wheel off, so you have a guide to know how to put this back together. <coughs> or, you can do what I'm gonna do. The first thing you're gonna do is take this tool right here. Now, this tool have a little opening in the center and it has a little groove right there. This helps take off the springs. So what you wanna do is that little opening fits over that piece right there. And then you, it's gonna, this little piece is gonna go up under the spring and then you twist it and at the same time, bring it off of that stud and pop that spring off. Then you take that spring out of there. Now what you want to do here is set the spring down just like that so it goes on that side. You want to orientate everything 
as you take it off. This way you know exactly how it goes when you put it back together. Same tool, you want to get this spring right here. Now this spring is going to have your little adjusting cable going around it. So what you do is take this, pop it off. Take it out of there. That little piece is going to drop off. Now this little piece has a little lip around it that sets right inside there. So set that down, put that to the side, on that side. The next thing we're going to do is you can take this cable, pop it off, just like that, put that cable down. Next thing we do, now you're going to switch up tools. Now you're going to switch up to this tool. Now these little rings right here, you can see this one better? Either one. These little rings right here is held on to a, a, like an arrow headed pin. So now there's a small side, you see that's too small, but then you got the big side, and what it does is you gotta, you gotta put your finger in the back to keep that pin from going back. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. So you wanna push it in and turn it counterclockwise or clockwise 90 degrees. Now, what did I just do? Take the spring out, put the spring down, pop that out. Let me, matter of fact, let me take this pin out, go to the back. Now here's the pin I was talking about, got the arrowhead. So it goes through the backing plate, the spring goes on, this pushes the spring down onto it, and then you turn it either way, 90 degrees, then it locks into place. So to take it off, you use that tool, you push it in, turn it either way, and then it comes loose. All right, let's get the other one out and we'll be right back. All right, we got both out. Next thing you wanna do is just open your shoes up just a little bit, this one over here. Pull it out, and you got this bar in the back. Take that bar out. Make sure you don't lose that spring. Keep that spring together right there. Set that down. Now, you take both of them, and now, you know, see, there's a spring on the bottom, if you can see, right down here. But what you want to do is take it out, like that, fold this one over, so you're going to, when you, by you doing this, you're relieving the pressure off this spring, and then everything will pretty much come right apart. Spring out, take the adjuster off, use the adjuster, set this down, set this one down, put this two to the side. Now the complicated part. Uh, this is held on by a horseshoe clip. This is your brake for your emergency brakes right here. To take this off, sometimes it is a pain to take off. So what you want to do is there's two ways of doing this. One, you can try to sometimes get a pair of pliers and try to like grab it and I'm trying to get you get a good angle at this and squeeze it like that. But sometimes that just don't work. Or you take your screwdriver, put it between there and you try to like twist it off. This is gonna be no pain. Alright, let's try to apply this again. This thing suck, man. There should have been a, a better way of doing this. the screwdriver as a pry point but this thing sucks I 
didn't get opened up some. Now, I hate these because they got other they got a uh the other system is like an e-clip that goes up there and very simple to take off. This one you know make the horse they should make the horseshoe you know even on both sides. Like a horseshoe? Yeah, you know, instead of one end long. Well, that just makes it a little bit more complicated to get off. Okay. Get like that. And hopefully that's enough to get that. If not, then... Let's see. Maybe it's... Usually that's enough that I can go back and this will pop right... Okay, there it is. Popped right off. That sucks. Alright, then just pick that up just like that all right uh, the next thing we're gonna do is get you a, a wire brush and we'll be right back guys now this is very important you want to do with your wire brush one this right here you want to make sure that part is cleaned off nice and clean because you need that thing to swivel nice and easy on the brake shoe you don't want it to get stuck or then your emergency brakes are going to get stuck. The next thing you're going to do, you're going to have six contact points on the backing plate where your brake shoe actually slides on. And you can see the rustic area where it's at, where it's been sliding on. One, two, three. And on the other side, you're going to have the exact same mini. So what you're going to do is take your wire brush, clean all six points up, And if you want, you can go around and just clean off the rest of this. Just clean up some stuff around here. Okay, now that we got that. Let's go ahead and spray it up a little bit. That is looking good, yeah, buddy. All right. The next thing we do is you gotta put some brake lubricant over there. You can use a lot of people use um uh, white lithium. I try not to. What I use, you want to get you some of this guy. This guy's is, this guy's is great. This is Permatec Ceramic Extreme Brake Parts Lubricant. You want to get some of this. This stuff is fantastical. All right. So what we could do is get a little bit, and you're gonna put it on the points. Just like that. And all six points. All around here. And then you want to take your brake adjuster shoe and you want to put some right around there. All right. Get our new shoes to put start putting this back together. We'll be right back. All right, you're gonna have your new brake shoes now. On your brake shoes, let me line these up right here. Now you're gonna have two with the brake shoe, the, the uh, starting way up here. Notice how that one starts way up here, and this one starts down here. So you're gonna have two of these and two of these. Now the one that starts way down here, that's the one that will be to the front of the vehicle. And this one will be to the back. Why specifically? I'm not sure. I never looked up why they did that. I just know that's how you have to do it. So being that it's going to be like this, we're going to start with the back one. Because we're going to connect this first. I'm going to put it, you got the hole around the top. Push that through there. Make sure it swivels nice and easy. And here we go again. <laughs> Take your um, horseshoe clip. Put it on there, hold that in place, take your pliers, and you can try to squeeze that together. That went pretty easy, actually. Now, a lot of times, yeah, there we go, there's our problem. 
sometimes you can carefully use a pair of wire cutters because it will somehow grab in there and squeeze that together. That is perfect. You get that, Sivvy? Yes. All right, the next thing you want to do, grab your two pins. There's are the holes. You got one on this side and you got one over here. Take your pins, put them in there just like that. I know you're like, like you're doing that too easy. I would them do a mile to follow you, but my brakes are falling all apart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, okay. The next thing you gonna do? Oh, what the heck? The next thing to do? The next thing to do is bring this brake shoe up. Now you're gonna have a cutout right here and that little opening right there, half moon. This little cutout will go in the wheel cylinder. Your wheel cylinders, these things, these things will pop out. As you can see, there's a little groove on the top and the bottom. So it sets right in there. So you make sure you're using there. Bring that up. Don't worry about your pin yet. Make sure that lines up into there. That goes up into there. Guide your pin to the slotted hole right there. Now one finger is going to hold that forward. Take your uh, one spring. Now the springs are going to be open at the top and on the bottom going to be smaller. Put the smaller end in first. Just like that. Oh, this thing stayed in there. You're going to have your ring right here, your cover. That's the outside. That part is the inside. The inside is going to stick out a little bit. So you want to put it just like that. Hold that into place. Take your tool. Push it down onto the pin. Turn it 90 degrees. And release. Holds right into place. Everything is looking good. The next thing you want to do is take our bar right here. This bar. Do you want take it, clean the brake dust off of it, and you're gonna have a spring right here. Make sure that spring is in good operating condition. It helps keep those brake puts brake pads, make shoes apart. And here we are. This side right here. Bring this in, and it's gonna go inside of there is your your that adjusting bar. So it's gonna go hook on to that adjusting bar, just like that. Let that rest. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is, you wanna switch over to the other side. Okay guys, hold on, we'll be right back guys. I'm huh? here. Oh, okay. All right, the next thing you wanna do is go to this side. Put this on, same thing. You got the opening right here. It's going to the caliper, I mean the, uh, wheel cylinder and then you got this part with the spring that's going to go into there put that on just like that get your thing pin hold that pin into place now if it comes apart see like i'm coming apart like this that's that's okay just just keep on going spring you can always adjust that. The main thing is just get this thing into place. Sometimes it's kind of difficult to get that on, but as you can see, I didn't get it. All right. You see, now we're going to... Now worry about that. Now we're going to go back to this side to start putting everything together. The first thing you want to get is you have your adjusting cable right here. Let's put this cable onto that pin. Leave it just like that. Take this. Put that. That's going to set into that hole right there. Set it into the hole. Bring your cable around just like that. Then you want to take the spring that goes over here. Here's the long spring. You want to take that little hook, hook it into there, and twist. Yeah, now whatever. 
Look at that in there. Okay, that's gonna hold into place. Now all this is not lined up right here. So I'm just gonna bring that forward just like that. Make sure that back there. Now, what's wrong? Dang it. Now remember this tool? We use to take off the spring. We'll <coughs> use the other end to put on the spring. Now this tool has a little groove right there. That's gonna end it in a little groove right there. That's gonna help you install this thing. So what you do, because it's gonna hook right onto that, and you're just gonna pop that spring on. So hook it onto there like that. Hook it on to the post, and then you bring it up. You're gonna feel the tension on it and let it just pop right into place. That part is done. It's, it doesn't matter if this is off or not, but you're gonna have it put it around that groove. Now let's get our other one installed. Now to put our other one on, make sure this spring is in there. Make sure that's in there. Get our spring, this is the little spring. And this one is gonna go, I see this one over this side went into the hole way over here. So you're not gonna put it into this hole. You're gonna go up to this hole right here. So you can go into the hole, hold it over. Same tool. up and let that snap into place this is coming out great now we're going to get situated because the next part is up under here can you see up under there yeah all right so the first thing we're going to do guys here's your adjuster now some a lot of times these adjusters will get corroded and messed up and it won't spin right and won't adjust the brakes uh, like this one is this piece right here will come right off that's nice and easy to come right off then you got this right here. So what we're going to do is unscrew this, unscrew the adjuster, take your wire brush, clean all that up. You want to make sure this is nice and can turn very easily. And if you want, oops, take this apart, take this out apart that much. Get your grease and you can put just a little bit that will help that out over here and also over here right here. So now bring that back in. That is good. So you want to bring it in till it just stops. Get your other one. Set that right on and spin that a little bit. All right, that's set. Let's put that down. Now we got this little piece right here that connects the spring, the uh, cable, to everything else. So what you want to do, you got this hole right there. And this has a little hook on it. You just want to hook that in there, just like that, and leave it. The next thing we're going to do is you got the big spring right here. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Now, what this spring does on this side, you got that same big hole down there. This end of the spring will hook into there. Then the other end, let me take this back off, is gonna hook into that big hole right there. So, I'm gonna hook that on. And get up here, let's see, let's see this. And get over there as a matter of fact what I'm gonna do tell you what, let's hook this on just like that and then go over here and just get it hooked into that little hole just like that all right you got good on that mm -hmm. now we're gonna put our adjuster it's important that you put your adjuster in the right way it is not like this. That adjuster got to be hooking on. The wheel has to be on to that part right there. Now this part is a little bit difficult because what you got to do is actually, we're going to hook this piece into that brake shoe. We're going to bring this out a little bit, hook it into there. And what you're going to do here is actually, this hand is going to push that open just like that. At the same time, this hand is going to be pushing off onto that. 
and there is a little groove right there that's going to hook into that brake shoe. So once you get it like that, push them back, bring it up, and into place just like that. But you're not done yet. The next thing you want to do is get you a pair of pliers or something. This cable <coughs> is going to hook into this oblong hole as well. Now right now, the cable will not reach over there. You need lighting? Uh, no, just, just hard for me to... No, go ahead. Go All right, ahead. so what you got to do is take the pliers, just grip the end of this, and pick it up until that hooks in there, just like that. And right now, the cable came off of here, so I got to bring that cable. I got to make, make sure that cable is hooked up around there like that. And release it. Check everything, make sure everything is good. That is a perfect job, but we are not done yet. My goodness. <laughs> what you gotta do now is bring your bolt with your uh, bucket out. You got a bunch of brake dust inside the rotor, inside the drum. You gotta clean all that out because if you leave it in there when you step on the brakes, it will squeal. So hey man, I'm like running out of this stuff now. So you wanna get all and clean that up. I'm almost out. So let's get that cleaned up and we'll be right back. You guys, now we're ready to put our drum on, but I should have showed you this while everything was apart. Now, if you look right here, when this wheel starts to turn, it adjusts. That bracket right there keeps that wheel from going back in. So it keeps on adjusting like that. So you gotta adjust that with the drum on. Now on the back of it here, there is a little slot that's gotta open. Um, in fact, can you look on the other wheel? I'll go around here. <coughs> you see right there? Yeah. That is a rubber grommet that pops out of there so you can use your adjusting spoon to adjust the brakes. So I'm gonna go on because you can't really see it from the other side. So I'm gonna go back over here. Okay, I'm going to reach my hand behind here and pull out the hole. And then you're going to get your adjusting spoon. If you can look way up under here, I'm going to put my the spoon through the slot. Matter of fact, uh, I can see the little wheel. If that's what you need me to see. And you can actually see the spoon. Let me see. I mean, hopefully, I can do this. This is what we get for not bringing. All right, yeah, yeah. Check that out. Check that out. You see the spoon? Now the spoon is going to go up against that wheel, and see how it's turning the wheel, turning it. That's how you adjust the brakes. There you go. So, now that we got that, put the foul drum back on. Now right now, this right here is too loose. Now what you can do is take two lug nuts and bring them all, bring them in by hand, or the, using the, the tool, that'll keep that drum from wobbling. Now that's too loose. Now, when you step on the brakes, dang it. I'm going to explain this while I have it on. Okay. When you step on the brakes, brake fluid goes through the wheel cylinder. It pushes those pins out, pushes the drum, the, uh, the uh, shoes out up against the drum and stop the car. If these have the further these have to go, the further down your brake pedal is going to be. So you might have a weak brake pedal until you adjust them. So what happens is you adjust down here, you bring these out till they just barely touch the drum, and this so down here is going to be just barely touching the drum, but up here won't. But once you step on the brakes, the full thing will hit the drum, and it'll be perfect. 
perfectly adjusted. But you do not want to over adjust it. Better you under adjust it than over adjust it. Because if you over adjust it, the brakes are going to constantly be on. It's going to cause the brakes to overheat. And there is a possibility of it causing a fire. So, now, oh, another way. These are these supposed to be self-adjusting. Now, to self-adjust these, what you got to do is back up the vehicle about 10 miles an hour. Slam on the brakes. They're supposed to self-adjust. Eventually, you're driving, they'll adjust anyway. How long anyway. you back up for? Uh, for about eight feet. Okay. That's it. Then pull forward. They go back again and adjust them. So what we're gonna do now? See, I, I'm used to this. It's so because you're like, damn, how do you know what the wheel is? You, you know, I'm used to doing this, so um, I can pretty much feel what it will. And actually, you you can hear it clicking. So I'll turn a little bit. As soon as you hear it touching, you want to stop. Again, it's better to unadjust than over adjust. I'm adjust it a little bit more and I'm gonna leave it like that. That is perfect. Take the um, rubber boot. So it, um, when you go adjust and you Turning the little wheel, which way do you go? See now this way they they put hopefully they show that when when I had one that's why I wanted to show them when I was oh, doing it because I wanted okay. to show them which way to turn. Okay. Um now you're gonna have a problem. If you over adjust, you're gonna have a problem because you can't really de adjust because that 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 bracket is uh holding the wheel from moving. So you probably have to take this off, take it off, hold that wheel out, hold that bracket out. And then turn turn that wheel back in but this is good this is the stop brake dust from getting in there which was stuff to getting in there which I don't understand I think honestly guys if I were you I'd leave it out because as brake dust build up inside there you give it away to get out all right that's on take this back off and let's get ready to put our tire back on we'll be right back all right guys last but not least you're going to tighten up the uh Tighten the lugs on the tire. Now you don't want to tighten them up in a pattern of one, two, three, four, five because there could be rust or something back there, which will not cause it to set flush. And then you're going down the road and the car is wobbling. And you think you did something wrong. You want to tighten it up in a cross pattern. So well, what you I did? Huh? Well, you did. <laughs> what you want to do? Ignoring Sophie at that part. <laughs> what you want to do is it's first, true. or what I like to do is first bring one in just a little bit. That's just the set. See, that's why I'm about to get stuck up there. Just to set the wheel. Then I'm gonna start tighten them up. So I'm gonna start off over here. Cross one, mix, skip one, go over here. Skip one, go down here. And do the other two. Now, what I like about doing rear brakes, you don't have to take off the cap to the master cylinder like you're doing fronts. <coughs> You don't have to. Well, when you have shoes, you mean? Yeah, when you have shoes. Um, you don't have to pump the brake pedal up. Everything is set. You're done. Just, you can stop, up top, uh, check your brake fluid if you want, but everything should be good. All right? We'll be right back. All right, today we had a 93 Ford OJ, I mean Bronco, <laughs> and uh, we showed you how to replace the rear brake shoes. If you guys have any comments or questions, you can post it below in the comment section or you can email Timmy at tim at astroautorepairs.com. Hope you paid attention. If not, watch it again. This is Sylvia from Astro Auto Repairs. If we can't repair it, nobody can. See you next time.